uh, well, let's let's get started. Uh, I guess I'll uh, I'll be the host today, and um, we'll, uh, we'll we'll kick it off. So, look, I, I'm really excited to be uh, inviting uh, Michael Wagner from uh, from Star Atlas. Star Atlas is one of our one of our great friends in Solana land. We've been doing stuff with Star Atlas for a while. Uh, we were the first to do uh, the AR integration on Step and a whole bunch of other things. So we're going to talk about all of the cool things happening with Star Atlas today. But um, yeah, maybe the best way to get started uh, is uh, maybe a little bit of introduction about yourself and what what is Star Atlas? Like uh, for those who don't know, uh, what's it all about and, and what are you guys uh, trying to do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do see a lot of familiar faces out there in the audience, so I'll be I'll be fairly brief here and happy to expand upon my answer if if there are any uh, audience questions directly. But you know, for myself, just uh, you know, super quickly, kind of ex traditional finance guy, worked in capital markets previously, got intro to crypto in twenty thirteen, and thus began my journey. I've launched. Uh, multiple companies in the space now. Uh, first one being launched in 2016, but uh, through that uh, through that journey, got connected with a couple of the guys that went on to co-found Star Atlas with me. That's uh, Jacob Floyd and Danny Floyd, our CTO and Chief Product Officer, respectively. And uh, also during that time, uh, got connected with our fourth co-founder, Pablo Quiroga, who's our Chief Revenue Officer. Um, it was tangential to the cannabis business, but uh, Star Atlas was conceptualized, as I said, in mid-2020. And what we envisioned at that time and what we still envision is that we can bring highest quality gaming to the blockchain and incorporate decentralized finance, financial incentives, a strong sustainable economy, and a great MMO. Uh, So Star Atlas itself is a grand strategy, space exploration, massively multiplayer online game. That's where it really all starts, the centerpiece of this whole vision. Um, So uh, all of the assets in the game are NFTs, and that starts with ships and land and mining equipment and crew members and buildings and structures and components, virtually everything that's um, uh, every object in the game is is in some way related to non-fungible tokens. But Um, the players will focus on uh, space exploration and territory control and political domination, which integrates directly with our DAO, which is ecosystem-wide, as well as uh, in-game, this in-game hierarchy of DAOs. But um, yeah, people will complete missions and quests and and, uh, engage in PvP and PvE and participate in character progression and uh, skill trees and leveling up and really all of the things that we love about massively multiplayer online games. Um, as I said, that's the centerpiece. The future vision for all of this, though, is really a truly inclusive uh, and distributed digital society. And that's that's the metaverse. And, you know, we see a lot of applications living in these immersive uh, uh, virtual worlds with gaming being one of those, but, you know, commerce and workplace and other social experiences. Um, I guess I should point out here, we are building an Unreal Engine 5. We were um, very early adopters to UE5, in fact, participating in the early access program. Um, and so this brings cinematic quality graphics to our gameplay. It's a hyper-realistic digital world. Uh, and we also were pioneers on Solana, um, making the the choice to develop on Solana back in at the end of 2020, actually, before we really kicked everything off. And, um, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, those are kind of the core, the core technologies. And then I guess just quickly in closing, uh, we have quite a few parallel tracks that we develop across. And so the core application is this uh, AAA quality, massively multiplayer online game and metaverse. But we also build uh, a, a web application, a web-based game that we develop in Play Canvas. And this is fully ena- uh, 3D enabled in-browser gameplay. Um, much more to come on that later this year. We uh, develop out infrastructure architecture and development tools, uh, one of which we'll also be announcing um, a little more broadly later this year, but things like a a native Solana wallet integration into Unreal Engine. So it's a seamless seamless playability for the player when you're interacting with on-chain mechanics. Uh, One of the fundamental components of what we build is our marketplace, which is really this separate product line that connects players for peer-to-peer transactions. And buying and selling of goods, as well as participating in the crafting economy and really all of the elements of the the game economy itself. And then um, 
uh, an up and coming division that we're rolling out now is is a mobile division. And, and again, I'll, I'll be light on detail there, but um, these are some of the core aspects of the company and what we're doing at Star Atlas. Yeah, this is this is all super cool. And, you know, whenever anyone asks me about they, they you know, GameFi is a is a word that, that a lot of people like to throw around. But people ask me, like, what are one of the what's what's one of the really cool things that you could do in these games or, or where are they leading? I actually always use the Star Atlas example. I'm like, what if all of the different things in the game world were, you know, objects or, or, or things on a blockchain? And we can probably sort of dive into that. Um, you know, as we go, but I'll, I just wanted to note, like, I think it's it's a really great example to to give people. Uh, you know, what Star Atlas is is trying to do here is uh, is really sort of groundbreaking, and uh, it it's inspiring as well. You know, when people are thinking of you know what could gaming be like, um, and uh, yeah, you know, I think there's a there's a lot of really cool things that could come of that. But I guess sort of moving on to uh, some of our, our our questions that we got here, and, and just FYI. If there's any other questions anyone else has, feel free to, to drop them in the, probably just reply to the to the Twitter thread that we have with this one, and uh, we'll see if we can get to it by the end of it. But um, yeah, maybe, so I, I guess we've, you, you've been involved in, in Solana for, for quite a while now, um, and uh, and Step and, and Star Atlas have, have been doing stuff together for a while. Um, but maybe you could share sort of what brought you to, to Solana and what brought you to the ecosystem and... You know, why was it that um, that you saw that this was this was an important place to be? Uh, what was it that uh, really sort of set this apart for, for you guys and, and the rest of Star Atlas? It, it's a fantastic question. I, I do appreciate the compliments, by the way, and you sharing uh, what we're doing at Star Atlas with with people that ask about it. And I just want to I just want to emphasize that while you know our priority, our focus is on building the highest quality gaming experience. I just think that the potential for what we're building, the vision behind the metaverse, these digital worlds, you know, global labor markets. I just think that it, the opportunity set is so much bigger than just gaming, but gaming is such a great attraction to uh, people that are outside of crypto today. So I think it's, <clears throat> it's just going to be, uh, I think, critical in achieving mass adoption over time to the extent that we can help bring people into, you know, into blockchain via gaming. So I think it's a great vehicle for that. But um, in terms of why Solana, I mean, we looked at a lot of uh, layer one protocols. And as I said, I've, I've been in the space for a long time. So I've seen this evolution of um, layer ones over time. But, you know, first and foremost, it starts with a tech. And, and so, you know, Solana marketed quite heavily the fact that they were a high transaction throughput chain, um, uh, that they were sub second finality. So this is like the time it takes to represent state changes on the blockchain uh, in in their case, uh, they represent 400 millisecond um, uh, finality. Now, it's probably getting a little too technical, but ultimately what that translates to, if you're a gamer, is latency, right? And we wanted a real-time AAA quality video game that lives on the blockchain. And I can get more into our underlying development philosophy and how that works and how we actually build game logic to live on the blockchain and not necessarily in the game engine, but, um, and then low transaction costs, right? These are like three core components. We anticipate bringing a lot of members in. There's going to be a lot of activity, transaction activity on the chain for game actions. And um, it needs to be fast and it needs to be responsive. So that was kind of the starting point. <clears throat> but uh, moving on from that, we also just saw this like it was very promising technology, but we also saw an opportunity in being very early to something that seemed to have adoption and also seemed to have some support from institutional players. And I, you know, I'm not coy about the the fact that, you know, just seeing like SBF and uh, Alameda slash FTX, like starting to develop technology like Serum, uh, the decentralized exchange protocol, seeing that institutional adoption to me was an endorsement of the potential of the tech. So set up a few phone calls uh, with Tolly and with Raj and, and had some good conversations about what we wanted to build. And it, it just, it was a great fit. Uh, we felt like we could catch the, the front end of that, that wave. And uh, I think we did. And we've seen just how innovative Solana can be and how much innovation is going on. I mean, you yourself, you know, at Step are bringing fantastic products to the ecosystem. And so it's, uh, it's been a great ride. Yeah, that's awesome. It's cool that you mentioned Serum as well. And it, it kind of, 
like this is a way that, that we can price stuff as well across the blockchain. And, and one of the examples that I always give people, it's like, what if there was, okay, number one, people are already spending money on, on video games, right? So why don't you spend money on NFTs in video games, which then maybe later on you can turn around and sell? So like you could literally profit from from it rather than just a, as a money sink right now. If you go to EA Games or Activision or whatever, they'll they'll sell your stuff, uh, but you're not going to be able to turn around and sell. That's number one. Number two is like what is the mechanism for us to be able to do all of these in-game transactions? And and as you said, it's kind of like it gets back to Serum and it's or it, it like marketplaces in general really. AMMs. We'll, we'll get into to what you guys have, have been doing there recently as well. But generally, just just the way to price things. Um, if you're able to do that and you're able to do it across the entire blockchain, which is what Solana is, as opposed to a bunch of siloed L2s, which is, you know, another way that people have looked at it with Ethereum land, but, you know, they're not connected to each other. They're sort of like liquidity pools that, that aren't really addressable by the rest of the chain. So the really cool thing about Star Atlas is like the entire chain is addressable, I guess, from, from within the game in that you could, uh, you know, you could trade from one marketplace you could do something somewhere else you could lend it you could do lots of stuff it just it opens a lot of possibilities for in-game assets so i think that's uh that's super cool um but uh i guess sort of just quickly uh moving on here we've got it, it's been a busy summer a lot of people building that's the the narrative of uh of bear markets right we've got to build um can you tell us about uh one of the events that you had uh you had recently in june i believe that was uh was uh was was something of interest there so uh yeah yeah definitely um and if i can again just touch on your last comments because i think that um they're uh they're meaningful it's it's you know one of the things that and it totally talks about is this idea of like composability and extensibility so composability being essentially the uh interoperability of applications or innovative projects uh, across an ecosystem. So how well do they work with one another and how well does the technology communicate? But then also extensibility, which is like taking kind of a primitive or a base application or something like what we're doing at Star Atlas and building extensions to that. And because once again, we we actually put major emphasis into putting some of our logic, um, like our resource management for one of our gaming applications, we actually built all of those resources to live on the blockchain. And that's how you not only purchase them, but restock and resupply your ships. Well, because this is an on-chain program, now other people are able to go and build extensions to that, build applications around it that interact with it. And what I love is it's this is all permissionless. We don't actually have to have a conversation or an agreement or a contract in place that says, sure, you can build some extension to it. We know it's going to happen. And we intentionally develop for that because it enables us to be more ecosystem-centric as opposed to product-oriented if that makes sense, like we get to build kind of in the same way that a layer one protocol gets to build by developing base layer technology that other people can build around. So um, again, your comments were meaningful. I just wanted to touch on that. But as to uh, we've had quite a few events this year already. Well, just a couple of events this year, I guess. But the one in June was called the, the was called COPA, the Council of Peace Assembly. And this was dedicated to our community. Uh, we have a, a quite a vibrant community, very interactive. <laughs> They're very excited um, about what we're building and <laughs> they all understand we have like quite a long roadmap ahead of us to bring the full vision to life. But you know, our, our, our goal and our strategy is to develop pieces of this, modules of this over time. So we're c consistently delivering content um, and um, uh, product that they can engage in, but uh, it will ultimately take a long time. But What's crazy is just we have so much enthusiasm around Star Atlas that, you know, guilds have been forming since virtually day one. The first guilds formed back in something like February of 2021. And we had just announced that we were we released the white paper in January of 2021. So um, this event was just focused on that community uh, and understanding uh, or enabling them rather to present their vision for how they intend to participate across the Star Atlas ecosystem, both in game and externally. And so we had some uh, 39 guilds that submitted applications to present. Uh, we, we only had so much time. This was actually about an eight hour all day event that we hosted in Discord. And so we had to narrow that down, but we selected 15 guilds to present their vision. And we mixed that up with uh, 
you know, there's a keynote. We had uh, Marlon from the Bass Jackers who played a set. We had a breathwork session. Uh, we have a partnership with iBuyPower, and they gave a presentation. We had Matt Sorg come on, who's the uh, head of gaming at Solana. So we kind of just mixed this up with presentations from some of our partners. But really, the focus was on letting these guilds present to the community what they intend to do. Again, whether that's their play style or if they want to build on this extensibility idea, build their own products and release those and get other players to use them. So it was a great event. Um, you know, given we were deep in this like down cycle, you know, the crypto winter, winter as everybody calls it, I, I can't, I just can't emphasize how like exciting that day was and how amped up that day was and how much like positive energy there was around, uh, around a crypto community in the midst of like the worst of times, if you will. Yeah, totally. And, and that's the cool thing about MMOs. Like I have spent uh, too much time of my life to admit to as a kid in, uh, in MMO land. And the, the really the, the content creation there is really from the community. So, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the guilds, a lot of people from the community, they will create their own content, which I think is where you know, uh, you know, a game has length, uh, legs for the long time is, is if you're able to foster an ecosystem where people can create their own content, do their own stuff. And sort of you guys as, as the game developers are sort of just there in the middle, like, you know, trying to, to direct uh, a lot of this content creation. So that, that's, that's super cool. Um, yeah, you know, I love that. Um, and I, I guess as well, we should talk about, I believe there was an announcement recently about the Star Atlas DAO. Uh, maybe you want to sort of shed, shed some light on, on what's all, all that about. Well, the DAO is one of the fundamental components of, you know, of our vision of what we've proposed and how we intend to ultimately turn Star Atlas as a, call it like a centralized corporate driven product development over to a globally owned and decentralized um, experience and environment. Uh, and so we were able to, through, through our 426 Live event, which we hosted uh, just a couple of weeks ago now, uh, we announced several products and, and the DAO was one of those and it's taking the first step where uh, we, we, what we've really enabled this time around is the base platform where a lot of new features will come over time, but it's you know ecosystem metrics around participation. Um, but the core feature, the core functionality on this was the ability to lock tokens um, and you know start earning uh, emissions from our uh, emission curve. So earning rewards for, kind of uh, demonstration of your commitment to the ecosystem. Now, I don't have all of the data immediately in front of me, but the participation in this has been overwhelming. It's something like 25% of all circulating supply that is um, within the community is actually, uh, has already been locked up in this. And we just went live on August 1st, 1st with the actual remort, uh, reward emissions. Um, the first snapshot taking place. So about 25% of all of the polis that's in circulation is already locked in that. But what's uh, more encouraging is uh, we we use a the Tribeca framework as part of our DAO infrastructure. And this kind of models the, um, the curve with the voting escrow kind of uh, token or metric. And uh, that supports anywhere from a two-week locking cycle all the way up to a five-year uh, lock duration and about 40% of those wallets has locked at five years. And why this is important is because there's, in the case of Tribeca and under this framework, there's no way for, uh, uh, there's no path to early withdrawal. Uh, those tokens are locked for that entire duration. And once that expires, then they become liquid to the user again. But um, the overall average duration across our DAO is currently about four years. So overwhelmingly, people are staking very long term, uh, which to me implies, again, that everybody understands that this is a long term vision. Uh, but these people are, are uh, have high conviction about what it is that we're building today. So uh, it was a great result for us. The community, I think, is is thrilled about it. I've received a ton of positive feedback. Um, certain, certainly room for improvement. Uh, George, as you know, like rolling out product and rolling out technology, never going to get it right the first time around, but uh, we're already you know, back to work, just making those improvements and uh, working on the next features. So uh, maybe a closing thought on that is uh, we do have quite a few new features in the pipeline already, which includes uh, locking for our transactional currency, which is in-game currency. It's called Atlas. And then we also have um, 
we have a, a path to decentralized path to decentralization document that we're going to be rolling out, which kind of speaks to how we get to a fully decentralized entity over time, where Automata, the studio behind Star Atlas, is no longer the primary driver. Um, we have uh, we also have the true governance functionality that everybody's anticipating, which is uh, the discourse for communication, conversation, uh, proposals, and voting mechanisms. So all of this is coming. And um, yeah, it's, again, just overwhelmingly positive response, in my opinion. Yeah, that's cool. Another Tribeca user there. Um, yeah, the cool thing about that is, you know, you're locking quite a bit of supply for a very long period, and, and that's that can't re-enter circulation in any way. So, uh, so yeah, you know, it can, uh, that, that's a lot of sort of money that's uh, out of the order books for the next four years, which is, which is super cool if that's the average. Um, as well, just quickly, I want to touch on, like, so... What's the difference between Polis and Atlas for those who are not familiar? There's a couple, you know, sort of new faces here I think I've seen in chat. So, yeah, what, like Polis is the governance token and Atlas is the in-game. And how do you see those two tokens being used differently, I guess? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you did you did nail it. Uh, Polis is the governance token of the ecosystem. Now, um, I just kind of spoke through the features that we are rolling out, that we have rolled out or will be rolling out. Um, but I guess I, I do want to point out that uh, we do have this hierarchy of DAOs across Star Atlas. So what we've released is the Panaculum DAO or the, the universal DAO. So this is kind of top level overarching of the ecosystem and will drive over time things like game development, things like marketing efforts, things like exchange relationships, um, but grants and um, uh, uh, distribution of treasury assets, which is what the DAO has actually already been collecting. Uh, income through our first modal of gameplay. Um, and it does so because there's this embedded operating cost system into every single aspect of Star Atlas. So when you're operating a ship, for example, across faction fleet, you have to pay for food and fuel and uh, toolkits and ammunition. This is how you engage in battle. Now, anytime somebody purchases those from the marketplace, though that capital doesn't get burned, it doesn't get destroyed, which I think is really an inefficient use of capital, but rather it actually gets captured by the DAO. And then the DAO in the future, this, this Panaculum DAO, will have uh, the ability through the stakeholders to determine how to spend those resources. And that could be through hackathons or game jams or funding some third-party development like a lending protocol or an insurance program or some DeFi application, right? So <clears throat> I think this is very important. But within the game as well, there's a whole political strategy component across the factions and then within regions in space as well, kind of these sub-politics. So you can kind of think of it as a county, city, state, federal uh, system of governance. And the Polis token will apply to all of that as well. So how you navigate the universe in-game uh, well, Polis will have implications for how you navigate the universe in game. So that's all Polis. Um, Atlas is, I, I would say, relatively straightforward. Atlas is uh, the in game transactional currency. It's if, if you're an MMO player, it's like getting the gold, right? That's, it's, it's the play to earn mechanic, it's how you generate income off of gameplay. Um, all of the, well, a substantial portion of new ship issuance that we create at Automata and sell into the market, that's all only purchasable with Atlas. Um, and then we do anticipate most of the peer-to-peer -peer transactions as well as all of the operating costs in the game to be denominated in Atlas as well. So this is just the medium of exchange and we expect it to be the currency of this digital society in the future. Yeah, that's super cool. I, I guess like the, the cool thing with Tribeca and what they're trying to achieve there is sort of games within games, you know, and meta games. And as you said, like you hinted at the, the politics within quite a bit of that as well. And that, that's kind of what CVX did with, with Curve and the emissions there and the Curve Wars and, and these sorts of things. It's like if, if you have a vested interest in one or the other kind of political outcomes within the game, then it's in your best interest to accrue a lot of governance voting power to be able to influence the decisions in your favor. And obviously someone else could have a completely different opinion and they want a, a different outcome. So it kind of creates this internal competition uh, utilizing the, the governance token as the means for people to like fight over outcomes. And that, that's what you want. Like you want people to be utilizing the government's token to, uh, to be you know, trying to achieve different goals, which, which I think is uh, super cool there. Um, so yeah, look, 
as well, I, I believe at the 426 Live you, you mentioned as well, um, there's talk about StarPath and the referral program, stuff like that. Maybe you could sort of shed some light. What is StarPath? What are these, um, you know, some of the other announcements maybe in the marketplace space as well that, that you guys came out with recently? For, uh, for sure. I, there were four big announcements. So uh, one of those was, uh, again, this uh, uh, partnership that we have with iBuyPower. Most people have probably heard of them if they're in gaming, but they're one of the largest PC manufacturers and distributors in the world. Um, uh, I see Santi in the audience. Uh, he's our head of community, and he actually, I think, uh, spearheaded that relationship. And King is the representative from IVP that um, is a member of our community, and that's how they got connected. He was hanging out. He owns Star Atlas Assets and, um, you know, super excited about being able to play. But I think he and Santi connected, and, and, um, and thus the relationship was formed. But uh, we started with... Uh, with uh, giving away actually at the Copa event, this monster PC with, you know, 3090 TI in it and just all top of the line components. It was, it was, uh, it was a giveaway to our community that was there participating. Um, we had a separate prize pool for the guilds that were presenting, but um, yeah, but that, that was where it started. And then we extended that with the 426 live event um, with a custom line of Star Atlas branded PCs at I Buy Power. Um, if you join our Discord, I don't have the, uh, the link available with me, but if you join our Discord, we can get you information on how to put in your uh, interest, submit your interest for one of those Star Atlas PCs. But um, it's it's a PC uh, case, it's headphones um, and a mouse pad, I think. There might be one or two other things in there that I'm that I'm overlooking, but that was one. Uh, the marketplace, we, we built a new marketplace from the ground up, and I guess, you know, I should backtrack to april of 2021 we built one of the first if not the first fully functional serum integrated marketplace on solana now big proponent and advocate for serum i, I love the concept of the central limit order book but uh there were some uh uh, there was some friction that was introduced as a result of how we were using that, especially because we operate with uh, a, an audience that tends to be relatively new to crypto and relatively new to these trade mechanics. And so we restructured our marketplace to be um, a little more accommodating to the traditional gamer and more auction house uh, feeling. And um, there's some other you know cool things that we're going to be able to deliver with that, but it's blazing fast and um, a little better user journey and better user interface. Um, and, and then we launched the DAO. And then there's StarPath. And StarPath integrates directly with our marketplace as well. But this is a kind of a next generation Web3 affiliate program. The whole idea is, I mean, it's not too dissimilar to affiliate programs that people have participated in in the past, which is uh, send people to the marketplace uh, if they make purchases of items from our marketplace, specifically from uh, the Star Atlas uh, original issuance or primary issuance, um, then rewards are accumulated. And these are these are Web3 assets that are distributed that are called prosperity marks. And then those prosperity marks can be used to purchase uh, ships from us. And so the idea is that we know that we have a lot of community members that are already out there supporting us, promoting us, bringing new members in. Um, and this inception of Star Path is a way that we can at least provide some upside incentive to them uh, through this referral system so they can start to earn some free ships, if you will, and free assets from Star Atlas uh, as a result of bringing new people to our community. Yeah, referrals are, are essential. Um, I think the best example of referrals throughout the crypto ecosystem is probably got to be some of the exchanges, uh, like the Binances of the world, the BitMEXs. You know, they've, they've had referral codes for a long time ftx of course as well and and people people like using them um and people like introducing their friends to it in that way so i think yeah if there's there's a way to to sort of be able to bring more people into the ecosystem and, and have the benefit there then then that's great and just as well just to um talk a little bit more about about the marketplace and how it differs to the old system with serum um what are some of the usability enhancements, I guess, that a user could see on, on their end, um, maybe for you guys as well, behind the scenes, like what were some of the problems that you were seeing and why the new marketplace is fixing all of that? So <laughs> I'll, I'll just hit it right on the nose. One of the most frustrating aspects of the experience for our users was um, the 
the mechanic of settlement on Serum, which was always a little bit unusual. Yeah. You know, you process a trade and then you still have to go in and settle it. And so it just led to all this confusion where people would purchase an item off of the marketplace, but then they would not be able, like, they wouldn't see it in their inventory because a secondary transaction would need to be submitted to settle that. So that was the first thing that we really just wanted to eliminate. Um, uh, the, the, the second part of this, though, is... Um, we also can facilitate now uh, direct peer-to-peer -peer matching, whereas you know Serum is an order book, and so um, there's certainly benefits to best execution. Uh, but sometimes you just want to trade directly with an individual, and you don't want to compete with like a bot that's operating in the marketplace. And so when you're using a unified order book for all assets. Um, then you're always going to be trading at either, you know, if you're selling, you're selling into the highest order. If you're buying, you're buying into the uh, lowest sell order. But um, sometimes people want to kind of hop over <laughs> what they know is just a bot that's placing an order that's one cent below somebody else and, and go direct to another user. Now, this is also going to be more important in the future of Star Atlas. Now, right now, all of our ships, um, as they're formatted, are really... SFTs or semi-fungible tokens. Um, each of the ships that are released, they're virtually identical to one another within the, within the same model. Um, of course, we have you know about 50 ships that are issued now. Those are all distinct from one another, but each ship within a model is exactly the same. But once we get into more advanced gameplay mechanics with things like ship configuration and, and uh, progression, well, that ship instantly starts to evolve and change change based on how somebody um, constructs their build out their loadout of that ship and that's everything from you know the engines that the thrusters that you use the shields that you equip the re the weaponry that you equip and crew members that are in there all of these things make your ship a truly unique asset as well as having a history behind it an on-chain history behind it um, like how many hours it's played and any other, um, you know, element of progression with that. Well, then it evolves into this true NFT. And so we no longer ha have SFTs, which means that even if you're buying two of the same ship, they are entirely unique. And so it's important for you to be able to go look through the marketplace and determine which one of those you want to buy and also determine if it's, you know, if it's a fair value play. Maybe it's worth paying a premium for two models that are the same if it has advanced components on it. Right. And so we can only do that by building out this new marketplace with the new functionality. Um, I would say those are the two core things, but we've also uh, completely reinvented and re-architected the back end. Uh, we actually run this on a game server on game server technology that's called Calisius. And so this thing just loads instantly. Right. It's incredibly fast. And so that was a significant improvement. Um, as well as uh, general UI and UX improvements. So the way that you navigate through the site, the way that you sort and filter items, uh, the ability to add bookmarks for items that you're looking for, a, um, a, a highlighted section for new issuance, new assets that are dropping. And we do drop a new ship every two weeks right now. So um, it, overall, just significant improvements. And um, yeah, I think uh, once again, I think the community is pretty, pretty happy with our release there. Yeah, totally. That does make sense. That was one of the things which I always thought was, you know, you got this order book of spaceships, but they're really, they're not really NFTs. They they are fungible. Um, you know, one is the same as the other. But yeah, once you start bolting new things onto it and you customize it and you do all these sorts of things, absolutely right. Like it becomes a, a unique thing and, and the price of one is not the same as the other. So fundamentally, like they couldn't live on the same order book. Um, you, you would have had to have moved to this model at, at some stage anyway. Um, and yeah, I think, look, for NFTs, the marketplace sort of uh, structure seems to be working really well and, and auction sort of stuff it makes sense for you, unique products. So, uh, so yeah, that, that's, uh, that's super cool. I guess as well, um, we should talk about what are some of the things which is coming in future for Star Atlas? What are the things that you're excited about? Um, and yeah, is there anything that, that we should be looking out for, uh, given all of these sort of recent announcements? Well, George, this is the, uh, alpha giving segment of the interview. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I, I think, I think a lot of our community already knows uh, what's going on, but happy to, to chat through some of this, but, um, 
you know, what we haven't talked too much about is the core gameplay development that we've been focused heavily on now for a, about a year, right? Actually building in Unreal Engine. Last year, a lot of it was presenting the vision, uh, getting the white paper out, getting the economic paper out, you know, facilitating our token generation event, um, also doing some private sales of tokens, um, getting some, a, a cinematic trailer, multiple trailers out, uh, launching the marketplace, like these are all things that we accomplished last year. And in many cases, they were first of their kind. And so um, it, it took us until about uh, August, September to build out our team, which we've grown from, you know, the four people that conceptualized it all and, and launched it up to 240 people on our team today in and around. And uh, so it took us some time to scale the team and get the appropriate people in place and launch all those things. But uh, we were able to kick off development in UE5 through early access in August or September. And that's what we've been building on. Um, and so the first major release uh, to come from that is something that we call the showroom, which is kind of a hangar module. Uh, it, it will be uh, just in full transparency. It's limited in gameplay per se, but it is a social environment. And one of the core aspects of this is that we're able to, the player is able to load their ships. They can call their sh ships into the environment, walk around those, view these beautiful 3D models, which by the way, um, you know, it's one thing to look at concept art, which is also beautiful. We have some amazing concept artists on our team, but looking at two-dimensional art on a marketplace is not the same as walking around your 3D um, model in the game environment and just seeing the true scale of these things. Um, and we have ships, you know, our extra, extra small class ships that are two meters long, uh, six feet. And then we have, <laughs> we have ships that go all the way up to seven kilometers, the Titans, that's essentially the range, but our, our commander class ships that are, you know, hundreds of meters long. So you, you can contrast these two side by side and you start to understand why, you know, if you're spending a hundred thousand dollars for a commander, why you paid what you paid and what the potential, the firing power, the social kind of entertainment components of that commander, what it's really going to be capable of. And you can only do that when you see it in scale and you see it in the engine. Now, um, over time, this not in this initial release, but in time, this is also multiplayer enabled with chat functionality. So uh, we envision having dedicated instances for those same guild members and in guilds that I referred to earlier, enabling them to operate their own, say, guild meetings or their own town halls or just um, you know, private events that they would like to host. Um, I think this is probably the alpha part. Uh, we are looking to add uh, some free flight mechanics into the showroom, again, in a later release, but you'll be able to hop into your ship and fly it around the map. Uh, and uh, by the way, you know, I, I've spoken on this before, but the a lot of what we're doing in building the showroom isn't necessarily just about the environment. It's actually about us developing the underlying content pipelines necessary for us to build the full game. So developing the, or refining the physics of how a ship flies and animating the ship and the texturing system and the modeling system and how, and the character system and VFX, all of these things, these are pipelines that we need to build um, uh, all the material libraries, by the way, that we build from scratch. These things all need to be developed before we can actually bring a game to market. Well, as we test these things out and as we refine all of these mechanics, uh, we, can, we can kind of unify them together, which is what we did in the showroom. So we can deliver a product that people can engage in while we continue to build the core fundamentals of our company that allow us to build all of the gameplay features that we've proposed. So that's one thing. Also coming down the pipeline is the uh, Atlas locking. Now, I guess what I didn't mention on the marketplace is that uh, while we were able to eliminate the Serum uh, marketplace fees because we obviously moved to our own marketplace, uh, we do intend to introduce a, our own marketplace fee on secondary transactions uh, at some point in the future, um, which, by the way, we will be splitting with the DAO. The DAO's, our DAO is going to get a portion of that revenue stream. We as a company in the short term will take a portion of that revenue stream. And of course, that helps us fund our development and, and pay, our, pay our payroll and, and keep things progressing forward. Um, but Atlas Locking, which is going to be available through the DAO, has an intrinsic method of providing discounts on the marketplace. It also has an emission curve associated with it that delivers polices, rewards. And what we envision is that this creates a stronger 
tokenomic uh, structure. And it starts to integrate like really those three core pillars of what we're doing, which is marketplace, DAO, and gaming products. And so now, you know, as you're either earning through the game and you're earning Atlas, you have the option to lock some of your Atlas up. You can earn discounts on the marketplace. This pays you in Polis, which now allows you to engage in the DAO. Um, you can earn more Polis. You can manage the treasury. You participate in governance. And so through this structure, we're actually just creating integration points and economic loops that tie all three of these together. Um, we also have a graphic novel uh, that is now essentially chapter one is complete. A graphic novel is it's kind of a comic book format that this particular um, graphic novel is going to speak to the history of Star Atlas before the game uh, era. Uh, so it's like all of the events preceding uh, the modern era Star Atlas, the year 2620. Um, so that will be coming out. And uh, we also have um, maybe some things that are less relevant to the community, maybe not, but it's this is the infrastructure that I was describing, some of the tooling uh, that we think is essential to be to being able to build a true Web3 experience. And that's a, this something that we call the Foundation SDK, and that's the native Solana integration into um, into Unreal Engine. So your wallet lives right in the client. Wow. Yeah, that, that's there's a lot of really cool things there. I, I On the Hangar concept, I think that's going to be super cool. You're going to have guilds that are going to get together on their mega starship and they're going to have guild events on the bridge and there'll be like 100 people in there. There'll be people... You, you got to have like funky dance emotes or something like that, and and people like you know wearing a I don't know some weird costume or a top hat or something. People will love that. That that be that'd be super cool. You know, um, just really quickly on that, by the way. I mean, we have like modules that are theaters and ballrooms, and these are modules that you can add to your ship. I see the hologram out there um, in the you know, listening in, in the audience. And uh, I know that they bought, uh, they acquired one of our bit boat ships and the bit boat is a transport vehicle, but this, this thing's like pretty much a cruise liner <laughs> for the stars where you can entertain people. And so I think, you know, really cool thing. You don't, you don't have to be out there just fighting people all the time. If you, you can take people on tours of planets, if that's what you're interested in doing and you can host events and, especially what we've seen now with like Travis Scott, right? In Fortnite doing a concert. Um, these these uh, concepts of kind of tying physical and digital together through social experience in digital environments is, uh, it's definitely up and coming. And so we're building some assets that are dedicated to the social experience so you can still enjoy Star Atlas, even if you don't want to get out there in deep space and engage in PVP or even complete missions. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess two quick questions there on what you were saying number number one about the world building um i think that's a critical thing for certainly an mmo like a there's there's been a lot of mmos over the years that have come and gone but i think the ones which have stood the test of time have had some sort of world building with it uh people sort of feel immersed and, and part of the world and there's a story there and you know they really sort of um you know want to be part of these different in-game whether it's factions or playable races or whatever it might be, um, like people, people want that. And I think the, the world building is like essential. If you don't have that, it's kind of like, yes, this is another flashy thing and I don't really care about the, the character that I am. But I think like if you care about the actual character and like the history behind that, I think that, um, that really adds to it. So, uh, so yeah, that, that's, that's super cool. Um, I yeah, would go just, ahead. I would just add that, you know, the, the, the issue with not having some of those social elements or the continuity or the um, the, the this like sense of um, being a part of the process is is that if you're if you're a gamer and you're relying on end game content and you're relying on a studio exclusively to develop that, then oftentimes you feel uh, like you're waiting a lot without actually having. You know, end game content in a lot of MMOs can get boring. It's repetitive. It's a grind, and really, what it results in is, um, you know, playing the RNG lottery and waiting for that piece of loot that you've been, you know, looking to equip on your character or you know put on your equipment. And I think you know all of that will uh, parts of that will live in Star Atlas, but also just a place where you can aggregate and socialize. I think it's just incredibly important to to building out the long term vision. But beyond that, it's also enabling people uh developers to 
create extensions again. So um, I'm a longtime gamer, and some of my best experiences growing up were playing mods for StarCraft or mods for Half-Life. And I mean, if you look at Counter-Strike, see, you know, Counter-Strike started as a mod for Half-Life, and it became this massive, like, um, uh, 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 esports um, kind of, like, gameplay modal, right? It became its own thing. And so we kind of envisioned that same thing over time. Obviously, we need to lay the groundwork today and the foundation today. But in time, we want people to build their extensions of Star Atlas that others will want to go engage in. Absolutely. Yeah, and you also mentioned there about the uh, the fees with Serum as well. And I think that's a good point that many people maybe don't realize is when you pay a fee to Serum, you know, that is a fee which, if, if it's your own marketplace, it could be going to the Dow. Uh, so all of that trade volume, all of the people that were you know, claiming their Atlas rewards or, or swapping it or, or doing, you know, other stuff uh, involving Serum, that's fees which uh, it, it's lost money. Um, essentially, you know, it's a, it's a fee going to another third-party protocol that, yes, look, it's it's doing its thing and it's it's valuable and so on, but there's a lot of value capture there, um, you know, which can happen. So uh, so that's, that's super cool to see that, uh, you know, with your own marketplace, you know, now you have more control over, over where those fees are and if that goes to the DAO and if people can then vote on what to do with it and, and blah, blah, blah. That's, uh, that's super cool as well. Um, okay, so yeah, look, uh, we're, we're sort of approaching our, our time coming up here, but maybe how about we end with this? Like uh, what, what's, A, what are some of the, the comments that you'd like to leave the audience? But B, maybe also what do you see the future of Web3 Gaming uh, and uh, Star Atlas's place within that? And and yeah, like a lot of people, you know, one of the interesting things which I saw, it was at, I think it was Token 2049 conference in London last year or something. There was the, the guys from Axie uh, on stage and people were asking, oh, why do you think game studios are not going to just dominate this metaverse space and they're just going to come in and Activision Blizzard's just going to like drop a billion dollars somewhere and then, you know, they're just going to walk all over everyone. The, the point which they made at that time was that those guys don't really get the, A, the sort of open source development model, B, the community ownership, and C, like they're going to come in there, they're going to come in where with all of their own IP assets and they're going to say, we own everything and by the way, you have to pay us, you know, $50 to, to transact on our own marketplace every time you want to do something or something like that, right? You know, they're, they're not going to get the whole um, community aspect of it and they're going to want to own 100% of it, whereas... As you say, I think a lot of the content coming from MMOs is going to be community created and communities will sort of emerge around ecosystems that allow them to create. So I think that's the edge which a lot of native Web3 crypto companies have is being able to come at that from that first principles perspective rather than I need to own everything and it's me, me, me. It's more, look, the community actually directs a lot of the content and, and can create a lot of that and can own it. Um, but yeah, uh, w what's your thoughts on, on the future of Web3 Gaming and, and where we're headed, especially with Star Atlas? I, I think you really nailed it, George. But the, um, and I do see we have some, some hands up, so maybe we'll, I'll be brief here and we'll try to get a question from someone up on stage. Um, but uh, first and foremost, I think Web3 Gaming is undoubtedly the future of gaming. I, I'm a longtime gamer. I understand the value proposition. I understand the benefits to players of true asset ownership, of being able to participate in the play to earn economy, of being able to create a new life, life for themselves there, of the opportunities that will be present because of this. I don't want to diminish in any way the value proposition that is entertainment, which is what gaming has always been historically, but now we get to build upon that as well. We can start with entertainment. We can start with um, escapism, right? So you can still escape to this world and still engage and have fun, but so many more opportunities are present and you get to capture a part of that value as a player to your exact point. Um, what I think and well, what I believe uh, firmly is that money does not solve all the problems of building in this space because there's a contrast in philosophy and, and you touched on this, but it's the difference between walled garden, centralized ownership of everything and uh, which is really like a unidirectional flow of capital. It goes from the user, from the consumer to the company. And it, it, it always flows that way. There's no trade-off that what you're getting back in return, again, is exclusively entertainment value. Um, contrast that to the ethos of crypto and of GameFi and just 
you know, open source technology in general, it's a bi-directional flow of value. So you kind of get back out what you put in and that's not just play to earn. It's, it's, um, uh, you know, the, and the asset ownership, but it's actually the ability to create around this and also the ability to innovate and be entrepreneurial. And to me, that's the most, um, promising component of all that we're building. Um, the extensibility that I touched on earlier, hey, go ahead, go create a product that interacts with our on-chain programs and go ahead and commercialize or monetize that, make money off of it. We don't care. We want you to do that because not only does that benefit you, it actually benefits the entire ecosystem. Uh, it actually possibly, if this is a game mod, I'm like air quoting here, but if this is a game mod that you've created that you want to commercialize because we've released um, access to some Star Atlas IP that now allows people to commercialize, well, that might actually be the feature that brings in more people, just like Counter-Strike arguably brought in more people to Half-Life than vice versa. So we want to encourage this type of innovation and we want to open the doors to people to be able to create and monetize because these are all new opportunities. And so, um, uh, you know, again, I'm kind of running, running long here, but I, I think that um, uh, disparity in philosophy is going to be the most difficult thing for a traditional studio to overcome. They might have all of the game developers already, uh, but we have all the blockchain developers and we understand how to work with this technology and we understand the potential and we just take a, a completely different approach to developing an ecosystem and the way that we share in value with the people that are creating with us. That's the biggest difference, and that would be a hard thing for a studio, especially one that's publicly traded, to be able to get their minds around. So, um, yeah, I'll pause there. Yeah, hundred percent. I don't think they have a chance. Um, but uh, yeah, so look, we, we've got a couple of questions here. I note like two or three questions uh, as well of people asking uh, when Step is going to support the the new staking module and marketplace. This was done two days ago. It's just going through QA. So literally, uh, as soon as it passes QA and we can get it out there, we'll get it out there. So, George, uh, so. by the way, a big thank you to you guys. Like working with your team is awesome, man. I, we kind of dropped that on you last minute, actually after the fact. Um, and uh, apologies for my side for that oversight. We were heavily focused on just getting the products out and we didn't communicate to you guys. But yeah, you picked that right up and ran with it. So really appreciate the, the fast effort and turnaround uh, getting the, the marketplace uh, and assets reintegrated into step no worries yeah no it's uh it's our pleasure i mean we 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 all have like i have my spaceship fleet so does a lot of the rest of the team like we all want to see it there it's a, it's a part of our portfolio so uh so yeah you know that's absolutely something we want to do we want to get it to it uh everyone as soon as possible so uh yeah hang tight it'll be out in very soon i don't know if i can give a date but whatever very soon is, it's probably within days. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so that, that's super cool. Um, we've got another question here about the Star Atlas Council and how it's elected for the DAO. Um, yeah, maybe you want to sort of shed some light on that. Does that make sense? It, well, it does. Um, I, I can't really share too much about it right now. So Dan Parks, our, uh, our general counsel, uh, and he's been working on this path to de decentralization document and uh, as well as working on an initial draft of the, the Star Atlas uh, uh, Foundation, uh, well, rather the DAO constitution. And this is going to be an open iterative document that everybody can contribute to, but we're just putting out our initial thoughts around it. Um, there is an intention to release a document related to an electorate, which is the Star Atlas Council. We don't know exactly how that's going to work yet. And again, this is going to be a community driven um, uh, kind of structure that gets established. So I don't have a lot of answers around that yet, but more to come on it soon. Awesome. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, look, I, I think we're, we're pretty much at time right now. I want to thank Michael for coming on board for today. We've got a lot of people in chat. Um, this will be recorded as well. So don't stress if you missed, you know, one, uh, one part of it or, or something like that. We'll, we'll certainly keep everyone posted on, on, uh, yeah, re-upping this when it's, when it's ready. But yeah, look, thanks so much for everyone for attending. Uh, is there anything quickly you want to sort of add before we, before we go, Michael, anything, burning on your mind <laughs> oh man i i see ash out there i think uh santi's out there i guess the only thing i'll say is a, a big thank you again to our community for all the support that you've shown uh over this over this uh, path and um you know anyone new out there we'd love to see you we have an incredibly and warm welcoming uh community so join us in discord follow us on twitter but um uh, thanks everyone for joining and george uh, i appreciate the conversation with you here 
Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Everyone get in the Star Atlas Discord, join a guild, stake the ships. Uh, it's going to be great. And, yeah, I can't, I can't wait until we have the hangar thing. That's going to be really cool. I'm going to be walking around my ships. and Oh, we can have a step meeting at, at the spaceships. Let's do that. Yeah, we're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll set up an instance of the showroom just for you guys so you can operate out of there digitally. In, Love in, it. In a fully remote world, you know, what better place than to get together in, uh, in a beautiful digital environment i love it i love it awesome yeah. all right thanks guys um thanks for coming everyone and yeah we'll uh, we'll be in touch you know where to find us follow star atlas and uh, and step on twitter and thank you so much for coming today thanks everyone thanks george cheers guys bye